Hello, Assalamu alaikum. I'm Dr. Javed Iqbal Kokha, Professor of Forensic Medicine and Toxicology. As I'm discussing thanatology and in this lecture, I will be discussing the rate method. We are discussing for the last for one lecture, the uh, determination of time since death, the postmortem interval. And the learning objective of today's lecture will be that I will be discussing the rate method and in this lecture particularly, I will be discussing the early changes. As we know that the changes which appear after that, we study those changes and they are applied in the rate method. They are immediate changes, early changes and the late changes. And in this lecture, I will be particularly discussing the early changes, which are the cooling of the body, the postpartum straining and the rigor mortis. So we know that rate method is the study of the changes which appear in the dead body after death. And as we know, they are appearing in definitive chronological order of appearance and passing off. And we study the body in which state the changes are. And then we time frame a bracket, time bracket in which the postmortem changes are placed. So they are calculated the changes which are appearing in, in which state they are. As we know, there are immediate changes, early changes, and the late changes. In the previous lecture, we have discussed about the immediate changes, and today we'll move on to the early changes. And these changes are the cooling of the body, that the postmortem cooling or the algar mortis, then the postmortem lividity or postmortem staining and liver mortis and rigor mortis, which is postmortem rigidity. So these are three changes which are classed in the early changes after the death. Now about the cooling of the body. The progressive fall in the temperature is one of the most prominent sign of death, we know that. And the amount of cooling indicates the approximate time since death. In tropical countries like Pakistan, the average heat loss is 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 degrees Celsius per hour. If we know that we take the rectal temperature and the environmental temperature and then compare the uh, fall in the temperature and various formulas are, are applied and in certain circumstances, we do not take the rectal temperature. If there is history of sexual assault, then the perineum is not disturbed that we do not take the rectal or the vaginal uh, temperature. Then we take the subhepatic temperature that is we give an CN in the right hypochondrium and insert the thermometer. Thermometer is that uh, thermometer which is uh, devised from zero to 50 degrees Celsius to calculate the temperature after death. So as the body attains the environmental temperature normally in 16 to 20 hours after death. Now about the postmortem lividity, which is postmortem staining. And we know that uh, in which state it is, that it is in the developmental stage or it is fixed, that is important for our uh, estimation is death. We know that it commences within 20 to 30 minutes after death as small mortal patches, which then coalesce together in three to six hours and become broader patches. And in eight to 12 hours, the postmortem lividity is fixed. That means, as we know that the postmortem staining is capillovenous engorgement, it is flowing of the blood to the dependent regions because of the effect of the gravity. And it is fixed there to the dependent parts. And when it is fixed, if you change the position of the body, it will not reappear on the next dependent state. But if it is in the developmental stage and we change the position of the body, it re reappears on the next dependent areas. But the faint marks re remain on the original, the first, position which were dependent. Now about the rigor mortis, as we know, this is uh, rigidity, postmortem rigidity, 
it usually commences two to three hours after that. That means that post-mortem anaerobic glycogenolysis is going on. It, ATP's production is going on anaerobically and which is sufficient to keep the body relaxed state for sufficient time. So when that period passes off, then the Riker mortis sets in. Riker mortis is basically chemical change because of the change in the chemistry, which is responsible for the uh, rigidity. The ATPs are depleted. Now the uh, myosin actin, actin filament will be pushed apart. They are, in the, they are not pushed apart because of the ATP and they become fixed in an actromyosin a gel form. And that is the rigidity and the stiffening and a little shortening, but, but which is not measurable. So about the progression, it takes normally 12 hours to develop on, and it develops from head to toe, craniocaudal progression. And we see the body, the Riker mortis is in developmental state, that is the upper limbs are developed and the lower limbs are not developed. So we can estimate the time that 12 hours had not passed. So then we uh, see that the Riker mortis then progresses and it persists for 12 hours. When we see that the body is in full re Riker, that means 12 hours have passed and it is not in the passing off state, that is 24 hours. So it takes 12 hours to develop on and for 12 hours it stays. So if the Riker mortis is fully developed, then we give a time bracket of 12 to 24 hours. That means it has fully developed and has not yet passed off. And in next 12 hours, it will be passed off in similar from head to toe manner. So if the Riker mortis is, is in passing off state, we see the body that is upper half as Riker is passed off, but lower it is present, then we give a time bracket of 24 to 36 hours. So that's how we give the estimated time after death. So summary of this lecture is that we have discussed the uh, changes after death, the rate method, and early changes which uh, help in determination of time since death, and the cooling of the body, the rigor mortis, and the postmortem staining we have discussed in this lecture. So thank you very much, and we'll continue this topic in the next lecture. In the next lecture, we'll be discussing the late changes which help in estimation of time since death. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel. And this is my channel name, Dr. Javed Iqbal Kokhar. Thank you very much.